Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here. Thank you for joining us for our Monday market update, 9 a.m. Eastern, every Monday morning, get you ready for the week. Stocks to watch, economic news to highlight. And while the market is down just 2.6% from its July 27th peak, around 4,600, AI stocks are reacting as if the bottom is dropping out from investors' feet. Mega Cap NVIDIA is down 15% from its highs with smaller names like C3 plunging 31% and Palantir down 23% in just the last two weeks. We could still see further market weakness in that pullback scenario I highlighted last week and that would mean more pain for artificial intelligence stocks. Is the AI stocks bubble bursting so soon or is it just a head fake till higher prices? I'm going to walk you through the details on that in today's main topic. Stick around after that. We'll have our Monday market update with all the stocks to watch, economic news you need to see. Before that, if you want to see the stocks I'm investing in for the next 30 years, my forever stocks, look for the link I'll leave in the description below. It's to an exclusive report I put together with The Motley Fool, the five stocks that I'm buying for the long term. Just click through the link and you'll see the first report immediately. Then they'll email you the next four. It's totally free, no obligation. They're going to send you some emails to sign up for the premium service. I use the service for the research, but there is no obligation to sign up for that. Look for the link below, get that free report. It's going to help support the channel and I appreciate that. On to our main topic though, because the launch of ChatGPT last November and that promise of an AI revolution that set investors looking for that next big thing. And while the tech software's owner OpenAI is not publicly traded, there were plenty of other stocks, including early investor Microsoft and chipmaker NVIDIA. Then, when NVIDIA forecast a record $11 billion in sales for its second quarter during its first quarter report in May, it caught everyone off guard that the potential in AI was real. If companies were expected to spend that aggressively on the hardware and the chips necessary to make AI possible, the resulting software and downstream effects would be huge. Of course, investors rushed in, sending shares of NVIDIA up 228% and C3.ai up 345% in just seven months. And as with all these trends, companies started to talk up any and all AI hopes and earnings reports even if the reality was far different. Retailers started talking up how they were going to use AI to improve customer service and that promise of AI-supported self-driving returned to boost a lot of those EV stocks. The boom helped NVIDIA to become the fourth largest company in the S&P 500. Here you see the index and the ETF covering the S&P 500. You see NVIDIA is the fourth largest company in that index, fourth largest company in the United States publicly traded, accounting for a 3% of the market index. NVIDIA releases its second quarter earnings August 23rd and now now trades for 40 times its trailing revenue compared to an average of half that over the last five years. We see here in Yahoo Finance on the statistics tab, you can see either here the price to sales valuation for these stocks and 40 times price to, er, price to sales for NVIDIA. We can see just last year it was trading for as low as 11 times, so about a quarter of what it is trading now. And most of these AI themed stocks trade for well over 10 times price to sales. All you out there in the nation know that's my, kind of my cutoff for growth stocks, how much I'll pay 10 times price to sales. Most of these you could see here c3.ai ticker ai trading for 13 times price to sales versus just five times just last year we can see here others palantir technologies trading for 16 times on a price to sales basis traded for as low as seven times just over the last year that's more than and more than four times the average 2.4 times multiple for companies in the s p 500 so those largest companies in the united states trading for an average 2.4 times price to sales these companies trading for more than four times five six seven times that and more but now eight months into this AI stock frenzy, investors are wondering if the bubble is about to pop. And shares of NVIDIA and Microsoft are down 15 and 12% just since mid-July. Shares of C3.ai are down 31% since June. And, and Palantir has plunged 23% just in the last two weeks. Now, a combination of just a weakening market sentiment overall and the fact that AI hopes may be premature, bringing investors down to that reality and being used as a reason for profit taking. I highlighted JP Morgan estimates last week for market scenarios with a 3 to 7% pullback before stocks continue higher as the most likely outcome. And again, the overall market only down 2.6% from that recent peak could drop another percent or two before the Fed's Jackson Hole policy forum starting later this month, the 24th of August. And with the reaction to the AI stocks on that sub 3% market drop, another 2% could be devastating as that pullback is really confirmed and could send these AI names down another 10% and more. On the bright side of that, another 10 or 20% downwards would make the valuations on these much more attractive on a theme that's likely to be a, a multi-year theme and, and a real change to how we do things. AI is here to stay and it's only going to become a more integrated part of our lives.
So just another 10% drop in NVIDIA would take it down to a valuation of 20 times price to this year's sales multiple. So price to price to sales of just 20 times versus 40 times right now. So that's still not cheap by any stretch of the imagination, but a relative steal to where it's trading at now. And against what will surely be a lot of pain if these AI stocks continue to come down, if that air temporarily comes out of this AI bubble. I want you not to forget that the 43 most expensive internet stocks crashed 80% in the dot-com bust over just two decades ago. Here we see the chart of Amazon.com. IPO'd in 1997, made it all the way to about $100 a share, then fell to less than $6 a share in that sell-off down to 2002. On a price-adjusted basis, it was just $0.61 cents a share. Those same stocks, including Amazon here, grew sales 10x since that, since that time. And Amazon, you see here, provided a 15,000% return. So as these AI stocks continue to fall further, do not second guess yourself. Have the confidence in your decision to buy these stocks on that multi-year theme. Stick with them and you will be rewarded. Now I want to highlight some of the stocks I'm watching this week. First up, AMC Entertainment, ticker AMC. I've got it here on the preferred shares, ticker APE. Those shares of AMC fell 25% in after hours Friday when a judge approved the company's plan to convert its ape shares, these ape preferred shares here, into common shares. Now, I highlighted the fact that this was all but assured in last week's update, and the company just needs to convert those preferred shares or it's going to face liquidity issues that could force it into bankruptcy. So this was all but a done deal. Investors could have booked a 23, 28%, 28% uh, rise in just a week if they had just watched that. Ape shares are now up 23% on this news aftermarket to 220 a share. There could be further upsides in these preferred shares if we get closer to that actual conversion, though. I'm worried that AMC investors are also likely to fight that approval, which could send these ape shares lower. So I would wait for a pullback, possibly if you aren't in these ape shares already, uh, before once again buying into these preferred shares before the conversion. Sempra Energy, ticker SRE, is scheduled to split its shares two for one with an ex dividend date of August 22nd this week. Now that means you do need to own the shares before that date. So she own the shares August 21st to participate in this. Investors are going to receive two shares for every one that they own in Semper Energy, and while the share price at, will be cut in about half, splits are commonly good for that overall price direction. Now, this California utility company has seen its shares fall about 5% this year, along with the rest of the utility sector, but pays a solid 3.3% dividend yield, and these utility stocks are some of the best plays in the market right now. Retail stocks are going to start reporting their earnings this week with Target reporting Wednesday, followed by Walmart here, WMT on Thursday. We're starting to see some weakness in consumer spending as people really pull back on those purchases and, and that credit spending increases. Walmart is expected to post a 4.5% decline in earnings to $1.69 per share for the quarter against revenue that's expected 4.6% higher. So that difference in higher revenue, lower earnings, that could point to that further erosion in profits from inflation with retailers really struggling to raise their own prices. A target, though, is expected to show a jump in earnings to $1.43 a share from just $0.39 cents last year and a strong 30% uh, earnings growth for the year on its cost-cutting measures. So really, shares of Target looking pretty attractive here. Shares of Target are down 14% this year, but could be an attractive play if the company can maintain, maintain that outlook. I'm also watching Palo Alto Networks, ticker PANW. It's going to be reporting its earnings on Fridays with the shares down 14% in August as really that whole software security industry sells off on weak earnings reports and lowered outlooks for the rest of 2023. Still, PANW here is expected to post 25% sales growth and 69% earnings growth this year, followed by 20% plus sales growth over the next few years. Shares are now trading for about 9.3 times this year's expected revenue. It's not cheap, but it is a very cheap compared to the stock's history. Most of these security as software companies trade well over 10 times on a price to sales basis. So this could be an attractive point to get in here and get these. That entire software security industry should see some strong growth as that AI ramps up over the next several years. And Investors should take opportunities like this recent sell-off to accumulate shares. Now for that big picture look, here we are on the sectorspiders.com, the sector tracker, one of my favorite resources here on last week's continued weakness. I was actually surprised to see that the S&P 500 was only down a third of a percent for the week. The pullback ahead of that Jackson Hole policy forum later this month is 
clearly not developing into anything like a full-blown crash, but it could still feel that way for investors in those higher risk stocks. So be warned for that. A case in point, the tech heavy NASDAQ fell another 1.9% last week to extend its losses to 5.6% from that one year high last month. So even though the S&P 500 only down 2.6%, the NASDAQ, which with a lot of those tech heavy stocks there down twice that, a lot of these other high growth stocks that we've seen in those AI stocks down two or three or four times that. We still have earnings from retailers to guide the market for this week, but price direction is really going to fall on investor sentiment until the end of the month and is likely going to see more selling. Now, despite the drop in the overall market, we did see eight of the 11 stock sectors managed to close higher last week. Stocks in just a few sectors posted solid returns. Uh, those in technology plunged 2.5% for the week. Now, this is a problem that I've been talking about for the last couple of months. Even with these other sectors doing well, we saw energy run higher 3.5%, almost healthcare almost 2.5%. Even with the rest of the market doing fairly well, it is going to be very difficult for the overall market to run higher without leadership from those tech stocks as the sector accounts for about 27% of this market weighting. So the S&P 500 as a whole, more than a quarter of that, the weighting there is in tech alone. NVIDIA itself as about four, three, four percent of the sector index or five percent of that tech sector itself uh, plunged eight and a half percent last week. And heavyweights like Apple and Microsoft, both down 22 percent, both are 22 percent of that sector weighting dropped more than two percent last week. So you got a lot of these heavyweight tech stocks that account for a big part of the tech sector and a big part of the overall market falling heavily, bringing down the entire market. As long as investors continue to take those profits in tech stocks, the overall market is going to look really weak and that's going to inve affect investor sentiment downwards in this kind of selling beget selling cycle. And looking at the one year picture here, I feel like I've kind of been harping too much on the upside in utilities lately, but it is difficult to look past this benefit to investors. Stocks in the sector are now down 8.4% this year so far, far underperforming the rest of the market with a 16% gain on the S&P 500 overall and down nearly 15% you see here in the last year. In the longer term here, this five years, the sector has returned just 21% over the last five years. That is 42% below what it would have produced if it had kept on that 7.5% annualized return where it's been over the last 15 years. So over the last decade and a half, it's produced almost a 7.5% annualized return. Over the last five years, that's less than 5% there. I think there's a big gap between the actual valuations, what these companies should be producing as far as investor returns and what they've been producing. I think that leaves, that opens up a premium for uh, investors jumping in now besides that 3.1% dividend investors are now are going to collect from a sector ETF like the XLU that's the spider uh, utilities sector ETF the XLU and just a rock bottom valuation of just 16.6 times forward earnings stocks in the sector should provide safety if the market continues to fall in a minor pullback so again you've got a very strong dividend yield upside to the price appreciation, as well as a protection from any kind of a market crash or even a minor pullback. I think that's a win-win scenario for investors here. Get your free report. The stocks I'm buying for the next 30 years, my forever stocks with the link below and help support the channel or click on the video to the right for the fastest way to live off your dividends. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.